Okay, my name is Kamara. I'm a rising senior at U of M Dearborn. My major is Health and Human Services. I have been part of the peer mentor health, mental health and wellness peer mentor program for 10 months now. Um, hello, my name is Grace. Like Kamara, I'm majoring in Health and Human Services with a concentration in public health. Um, I'm a rising junior and I've been a part of the peer mentor program for about a half year. So oh. we were gonna start. Oh. <laughs> we were gonna start off with the icebreaker. The question was gonna be, do you know your zodiac sign? If so, what is it? If you feel comfortable sharing, and we'll type that in the chat box. I already know yours, Kamara, but do you want to tell the audience what it is? <laughs> I'm a Cancer. My birthday is next month. Ooh, oh, yeah. Wait, is it? It's cancer season, right? I think it just started yesterday. Yeah. I stay in cancers. I am a Scorpio. Sun, yes. Oh, someone said they're a Taurus sun. I don't think I know any Taurus girls. But I know multiple tourist boys. All righty. Do you want to get started with the PowerPoint? Mm -hmm. Oh, today we are doing a beginner's guide to zodiac signs. Um, the background of zodiac signs is created by the Babylonians to predict seasons and other celestial events. Originally, astrology started as um, basically determining severe weather season. It was very similar to astronomy in determining the stars. It was later introduced to the Greeks and the Romans, and it became more of predicting personal events, personality traits, um, challenges that you may face. Um, just so you know, the zodiac meaning <laughs> meaning of the word the zodiac is the circle of the animals, which is a Greek word. So here, if you don't know your sign, if you don't know your sign, um, oh, excuse the phone ringing in the back. If you don't know your sign, here's the chart so you can see it. And then um, Kamara's going to walk us through a link to our natal chart because your zodiac sign is so much more than what day you were born, it takes place like when the moon placements were, the sun placements, and overall planets were the day you were born to determine uh, your personality. Yeah, so we all, um, during the icebreaker, we all introduced our sign, which is our sun, but mm -hmm. um, you're going to see this very many placements. Yeah. So if you don't have this on hand and you want a few minutes to go ahead and grab your own birth certificate, or ask your um, parent or guardian your birthplace, birth time. Um, the birth time is very important because it can throw off your rising sign, which is um, your parents, basically. Mm -hmm. um, do you mind dropping this link into the group? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so they can do it along with it. So the link is um, astro.com slash s s slash cgi slash ade dot cgi question mark. All right, I dropped it. And then also what Kamara was talking about, the um, how zodiac sign means circle of animals. The circle is 360 degrees and it consists of 12 houses, which we'll be getting more into later. And each house goes up to 30 degrees. Yeah, so when you, um, when we type in our birth entry, um, you'll see it. You can do it along with me, or you can do it on your own free time. So I'm going to get into it. My first name is Clara. My last name is optional. Um, take female. My birthday is the 16th of July. I was born in, ooh, 1999. My birth time was 8 p.m. So if you don't know military time, um, in the parentheses they show you like 
20 means 8 p.m., 21 means 9 p.m., et cetera, et cetera. Um, I was born at 8.04. It's very important to know the exact time. Um, country, America, birth town, South Hill. So when you type in your birth town, just wait a minute for these options to pop up and then go ahead and click. And then I'm just gonna click um, continue. When I click continue, you're gonna get this page. Go ahead and just go to the extended chart selection. Makes your life a lot easier. You're gonna see horoscope for Kamara. Um, partner is representative if you wanted to add um, your best friend or your significant other or your parent, and you can actually do a chart on the synastry. So um, that would be another time, but if you were interested in seeing the compatibility between you and another person, you could add their information. And then right here, you could scroll down to finish your chart. But since we're only doing ourselves, we're just gonna stay with the natal chart wheel. So you're not gonna change anything. You can go ahead and scroll down to click here to show the chart. And here you will get your birth chart. So um, as Grace said, there are 12 houses right here. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, blah, 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 blah. Um, the circle is 360 degrees. Um, all 12 houses are split into um, 30 degree segments. So as you can see, for example, my sun sign is in Cancer. And this 24 right here represents the degrees that my son is at. Um, the 01 represents the minutes. So for example, my Mercury is in Leo and it's eight minutes and 51 seconds. So if I was born literally nine seconds later, my Mercury would have went to nine degrees Leo instead of eight degrees Leo, if that makes any sense. <laughs> um, <laughs> If you don't know the symbols, I only know the symbols because I'm literally obsessed with astrology, but here <laughs> below, um, right here, the symbol is sun, this symbol is moon, um, Mercury has the two ears, um, Venus has no ears, Mars is the same symbol as the masculine sign. Um, we have Jupiter, which is like a four, Saturn, et cetera, et cetera. And once again, um, we don't have to necessarily read the chart because as you can see below, sun, Cancer, moon, Virgo. Once again, I told you guys that my Mercury was Leo. And then right next to it, these are your aspects. So um, the square in general represents challenges. The conjunct represents challenges. However, the triangle represents um, a general good aspect. It's not going to be a challenging aspect. Um, I feel like I'm overwhelming you guys. <laughs> I mean, it'll make much more sense as you go along the PowerPoint. Yeah. Right now, you probably like houses. Yeah, yeah. So when you, um, if you don't want to read the chart, and this is kind of confusing, you can actually go to the top and click PDF additional tables, and this will pop, and this will pop up. Um, so once again, it's going to tell you my son is in cancer at 24 degrees. Um. And the house it's in, which we're going to get into houses, is the seventh house. Um, once again, if you don't know these symbols, I suggest you, we're going to show you because it's on the PowerPoint, but my ascendant is in Capricorn. That's the Capricorn symbol. And then this is, once again, my aspects. So my sun squares my Jupiter because Jupiter is the four. So that's a little bit of a challenge. If that makes sense. If you have any questions, please drop them in the chat box. <laughs> <laughs> but without further ado, we're going to go back into the PowerPoint. If you want to just save your chart to come back to, please go ahead. I'm trying to go back to the PowerPoint. Okay. And then also, there's an app called CoStar where you can put in your uh, natal chart and like it figures it out for you. I actually wouldn't use the app though for like personality reasons or describing the actual signs because I feel like it's not reliable. Yeah, it's a, nice to have like an actual um, set chart to come to on your phone. There's another app named um, Time Passages. And it'll give you your chart like that. So it says like my son is in cancer. 
but the thing about that is um it does make you pay if you want to start looking at your daily transit mm-hmm. <laughs> the wrong <laughs> that i'm sure you can find it somewhere else for free <laughs> yeah um so getting more into the planets so we highlighted the ascendants sun and moon because those are kind of like your major planets that you want to look at your ascendant being your social personality that's how um you dawn on people as it relates to your placement your son is focusing more on your identity and um self-expression tendencies and how you recharge i highlighted recharge because a good way to remember it is recharging from the sun um, moon is how you focus on your emotional life it relates to immediate emotional responses that de- um, determines how emotional you are uh, Mercury is your day-to-day expression and communication. And then Venus, it focuses more on love and money and is a simplistic interpretation of these. So for your um, ascendant, for example, your rising sign element is helpful in understanding, understanding the type of energy that drives your overall approach to life. And then for your sun, it kind of qu- answers the question of I am or focuses on your individuality and your experience in life. So, um, your son focuses on like what makes you up as a person kind of, and that's kind of why we focus on son. Uh, focusing more on son when you talk about like, when you ask someone, what's your zodiac sign? Because that is your identity. And then um, Mercury, Mercury's action is to take things apart and put them back together. So um, that's why they say your day-to-day expression and communication, and it is an opportunistic planet, decidedly emo- unemotional and curious. Oh, and then I highlighted the um the ascendant sun and moon. I highlighted them in blue just so that you can know that those are your big three. So knowing that your sun is Taurus, for example, if you have a moon in Aries and an ascendant in Scorpio, those are also going to play big factors on your um, horoscope. Mm-hmm. You may relate to um, those placements as well, basically. Yeah. So you're never truly one time. <laughs> right. That's why when people say, oh, I'm like, sorry, I'm going off topic, but like, they say, oh, I'm a Scorpio, but, well, actually, I can't think of an example for Scorpio. Well, they say I'm a Cancer, but I'm not super sensitive. Mm-hmm. You might want to look at what your moon sign is rather than your sun sign. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I agree 100%. Did we get a chat? I can't see the chat box. I think we got a check. Oh, no. Oh, okay. okay. So for the next planet, um, we have Mars, which is the soul behind your identity, the subconscious side of yourself that you typically keep hidden, and it's the driving force behind your emotional reactions. Um, Mars in general is, um, I consider it like the planet of like your willpower, um, just as like a quick summary. Jupiter, often known as the planet of luck, it is the placement in your natal chart that points to the area of life where you're granted gifts and blessings. Jupiter indicates your philosophical and spiritual worldviews, perceptions of wealth, and your experiences of travel and long journeys. Um, Saturn, the planet of structure, discipline, and work ethic, the planet of karma, um, the planet of authority, status, of honors, recognition, all of that lovely stuff. (laughs) Um, Uranus is associated with enlightenment, progressiveness, objectivity. Um, Negative expression of Uranus is rebelliousness without a cause and irresponsibility. So I feel like Uranus is kind of, um, how do I describe it? like you connecting to your higher self almost mm-hmm. you kind of using like your wisdom to see how you're going to approach things so for example if you are kind of impulsive you may be rebellious like it said um neptune originality um sudden changes and pluto Shows are an individual searches for truths and deep meaning. This area of life may be associated with change, upheaval, power struggles, and issues of control. Um, I laugh because Pluto is actually the planet of, um, how do I put this non-negatively? It's kind of the planet of 
endings and all oh, the yeah. endings, endings from the beginnings but I wanted to be good at something that was good. Um, I also wanted to, oh sorry. oh sorry, I was just going to say that uh, Mars, it focuses on the mecca of your inner world and how you typically react to emotional situations. Um, and it helps you feel pleasure, pain, joy, sorrows, and gives insight on how you usually nurture and restore yourself in these emotional situations. And then for Saturn, um, you notice how it says like maturity, structure, discipline. Um, those usually come over time and it's actually equivalent to the Greek god of time, Kronos. Yeah. So I forgot what age it is, but for Saturn, there's a Saturn return. I want to say it happens around 30. Um, 27 to 30 and that's when basically you have like a major transformation in life that um, develops you in a way um next we're going to get into the houses so as i showed you guys in the chart i'm gonna go through houses and i'm gonna show <laughs> i don't want to confuse so the first house is how you are perceived how um you perceive others, um, it's how you physically look. Maybe you have strong bone structure, maybe you have um, an oval face. Um, second house is gonna be your own personal wealth, your own material gain, your income, your possessions, um, the type of job that you need in order to get that income that you may desire. Um, your third house is gonna represent your relationship with your siblings, your relationship with your neighbors, um, the way that you communicate to others, um, early education, so like elementary school, middle school, high school. Um, fourth house is going to represent your home life, um, how your mother is, how in general women are around you, um, your family roots and your childhood, what you experience in your childhood. The fifth house is going to represent your creativity, um, what your children will be like, um, how you are in romance, your self-expression, basically how you are in your hobbies and how you go about expressing yourself. Um, sixth house is your daily routine. It is also representative of your health, so any health issues that you may encounter. It's representative of your pet life. If you have any pets, it's representative of how you um, service in a way of like how how do you feel best giving to others? Or do you not feel best giving to others? Um, it's also representative of your habits. Um, seventh house is your relationships with literally everyone. It's my relationship with Grace. It's my relationship with anyone who I may be dating, my parents, et cetera. It's how you are in relationship, basically similar to your love language, how you receive love. Um, eighth house is joint finances, so if you're married or um, you and your dad or you and your mother are in a business together, it represents how those finances will come in when you're with another person. It represents, um, if you get married, your in-laws, um, your partner's resources, um, your sexual relations, um, extremes. Eighth house is said to be the house of extremes, so you may go through a lot of emotional crisis. You may also go through situations where you transform. For example, when you get married, that's said to be a transformation. When you graduate high school, that's said to be a transformation because you're stepping into the real world. It doesn't have to be a transformation as mundane as a death. It can be something that is pivotal in your life, basically. Um, ninth house is the house of wisdom, spirituality, if you're very spiritual, or um, religion, if you're very religious. Um, it's said to be the house where you search for your meaning. Um, it's also the house of higher education. So if you proceed to get education outside of um, primary education, then that would be the house where you look to see how that would go. Um, tenth house is gonna be, once again, kind of related to the third house in the sense that it is focused on your career. Um, this house is focused on your father, your relationship with your father. Focus on your recognition that you'll gain from your career, how you'll gain it, the honors that you'll get from your career. Um, if it's possible, if it's a good placement for you to gain fame in, um, your long-term goals, and it's overall the house of your reputation. How do you feel about your reputation? How do you gain a good reputation? 
the 11th house is your social life and awareness. It's said to be the group, um, the house of your friends, the house of the groups that you surround yourself with. Um, so for example, the clubs that you may join. Um, the 12th house is the house of endings. So it could, like, it could represent um, how you may pass on to the next life. It could represent enemies in the sense that they're not necessarily enemies, but they'll know how to bring out unconscious behaviors that you have in yourself. So for example, if someone has, um, I have a friend who's a Sagittarius and her 12th house is Cancer. So whenever I'm around her, she has the ability to read me without me saying anything. So she has the ability to figure me out, basically. That's what I mean by enemies. They know how to figure out your weaknesses and your strengths. Um, the 12th house is also the representative of karma. And it's overall, it's just the house of hidden things, hidden things that just pop up in your life. And you're like, why is it popping up? Um, I just want to show my chart again. So if you're trying to read your houses, um, once again, it's going to be easier to just click this PDF. It's going to take you to this page, and you're going to see Sun, House 7. Um, I have Pluto in my 11th house. I have Neptune in my first house. And um, we're actually going to get into what the... Um, <laughs> Um, so the other Kamara said we'll get ready to um, keep your meeting. I don't know why that sometimes happens. Um, so like, thank you. So like what Kamara said, we'll get more into that. But first, we're going to um, discuss the elements. So um, each of the signs fit into a specific element. So Gemini's Libra is in Aquarius. They're in air signs. Taurus, Virgos, and Capricorns are in Earth. Water is Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. And fire signs are Aries, Leos, and Sagittarius. So for air signs, um, they're some of the hardest people to pin down. They're quick, curious. <laughs> I see you nodding. <laughs> we know the Geminis. <laughs> Sorry, inside. <laughs> they're quick, curious, flirty, and smart. Um, when they do commit to people or projects, they tend to be... Um, they need to be interesting to stick around. Uh, so they really need to um, find that thing that makes them stick. And then uh, air signs are great people to know because they will expand your music library, friend group, vocabulary, book collection, and all above your mind. Um, they say air signs tend to make great writers, artists, communicators, and charmers. And that's probably because, um, as I said, they're kind of flirty, uh, quick, they're always trying to be involved in something, but they yeah. do need to be pinned down. Need for like mental stimulation. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to put it. They need to be captivated. <laughs> so for, for earth signs, they tend to get down to work when you need it most and everyone and keep everyone saying they are the wise, stable, sensual, and overall grounded sign. Uh, they're also reliable, trustworthy, and they tend to be really logical and rigid. Uh, for earth signs, again, they're reliable. They're down to earth, not to be cliche. And they make, they tend to make good cooks and gardeners, they say, which I can see that. Um, for water signs, that's me, Kamara. Uh, <laughs> the water sign, keep, sign keeps everyone in touch with collective heart and soul of humanity. Um, they are really intuitive. Some say psychic. And I could definitely see that because they're always, they can really read and um, tune in to how others are feeling. And that's why people say that they make great detectives, poets, doctors, therapists, um, and filmmakers. Uh, they're also really dreamy, sweet, empathetic, dramatic, and caring. They're always looking after their friends and they're extremely loyal. And they're soothing and often attract those who need healing and would do anything to help people in need. So again, that's why they say they make great um, psychiatrists or therapists because they're really intuitive and can relate to others and put themselves in others' shoes. And then for fire signs, um, again, another cliche. They're bright, warm, and enticing, just like a fire. 
Um, these signs love in others innocently, innocently with their whole being and will lead by their heart rather than their head. Um, they will do anything they set their minds to. And they are just a great sign to be around because their vibes are really chill and exciting. Um, along with fire signs and especially Sagittarius, they are really independent and always looking to uh, go on adventures and have fun. So they're always looking for that spark to keep them um, captivating. So next are the modes. So um, cardinal signs are known as the leaders. They're open to change, they're driven, they are known to be the, um, one of the first people to step up and start a movement. Um, cardinal signs are represented by Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. As you can see, Aries and Libra are red and Cancer and Capricorn are blue. I made these different colors because um, Aries and Libra are sister signs. Sister signs are basically, um, they're known as opposite signs, but like, let me think of an example. I'm a Cancer, mm -hmm. so they say Cancers are emotional, and they say Capricorns are unemotional. But when you look at the internalness of a Cancer, a Cancer can be very business-minded, and a Capricorn can also be very emotional deep down. Mm -hmm. So sister signs saying that basically they kind of have the same soul, they just bring out the opposite to the public, if that makes sense. So Aries, very, very action-oriented. Libra kind of sits back and wants to make sure that everyone is feeling balanced in the same way, feeling balanced before they act on their action. So they're still working towards getting action done. They're just working towards it in a different way. Libra is more concerned about everyone else. Aries is more concerned about kind of being the first person to do it. Um, big signs, persistent, stable, resistance to change, um, determined. So once again, Taurus and Scorpio are sister signs. Leo and Aquarius are sister signs. Um, mutable signs are said to be flexible, adaptable, sympathetic. Um, Gemini and Sagittarius are sister signs, and Virgo and Pisces are sister signs. So um, they say that cardinal signs, once again, they start the project, big signs go in and they tweak the project up to make sure that there are no holes in the project. And then mutable signs are going to be the ones that are able to basically project the project and sell the project to the public if that makes so now we're getting into the okay no can you try muting again it's the echo oh yeah thank um, you i don't know why sometimes that happens with Zoom, but we will persist thanks girl so now we're getting into the sun signs so like we said before aries is a fire um the symbol is a ram and as you can see we have the symbol um in the photo and then that's also um, how the stars are aligned, makes it look like a room. So that's where they get their animal uh, characteristic from. Uh, their chakra is sacral. So if you know a little about chakras from my last workshop, you should be familiar with that. Uh, their planet is in Mars, and they tend to be passionate, motivated, and confident leaders who build communities within their cheerful disposition and relentless determination. They take uncomplicated and direct in their approach, and they often get frustrated by exhaustive details and unnecessary nuances. And like Kamara said in the last slide, they are really action-oriented individuals. Um, so So next, the next um, sign is Taurus. Its element is Earth. Its animal is the bull. Its chakra is the heart chakra, and its planet is the Venus. Um, it's represented by the heart chakra because the planet Venus is actually, in astrology, it's the planet of love and romance and all that cute stuff. <laughs> um, the characteristics of Taurus, they are famous for their stubbornness. Um, they are a bit of a dark horse. They are They're very stable. Um, they're going to stay in their comfort zone. That's what they're said to do. Um, they have a lot of persistence. They have the ability to deal with a lot and still push through it. Um, they're very sensual. Instead of necessarily um, crying with you, they may offer you a hug. Their love language may be touch. Um, they love beauty. They can be a little bit 
um, materialistic at times because they just they love having the good finer things in life um and once again they can sometimes get too stuck in their comfort dealing with situations that no longer serve them so um, and then they're also really uh, creative yeah Oh, I got Gemini. So Gemini, um, their element is air. Their animals are twins, and you'll see that later, why they're known for uh, having twins as their animal. They're the throat chakra, because they're very opinionated, I would say. And then their planet is in Mercury. So they're known for their multiple personalities. That's kind of a cliche kind of way to put it, um, again, relating with the twins. They can be really impulsive nosy and indecisive, but they are very family oriented, outgoing and community built individuals. Um, they tend to love having people around, speaking their opinion. Um, again, they're the throat chakra, so they, again, they're really opinionated. And um, overall, once they uh, have a good community and kind of a good group of people around them, then they're, uh, that's when they're most happy. Yeah, and their um, multiple personality thing is said to be caused by their actual want to please everyone. Mm -hmm. So something I've actually noticed is Geminis are fairly sensitive. They just go about expressing their emotions by literally talking. <laughs> They'll talk their emotions to you. Yeah. I feel like they say cancers are sensitive, but I feel like Geminis are sensitive in a different way. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Say it preach. <laughs> well, cancers. Cancer season started yesterday. Okay, so our element is water. I am a cancer. Our animal is crab. Our chakra is the third eye because we're said to be um, intuitive in basically the ability to feel other people's emotions. So if you know about our workshop and the third eye chakra, you'll correlate those. Um, the planet is moon. And our characteristics are we caring, we're said to be intuitive, we're said to be extremely protective, extremely sensitive, um, extremely emotional, may take things personal. Um, but due to our caring side, we have extreme emotional strength. We have the ability to face challenges and actually heal and go through things. They can be artistic. Um, they can be gravitated towards creative work and also work that is centered around home life. Um, cancer is representative of the fourth house. So if you guys remember, fourth house is your home life. It's your mother. So they may be interested in that type of work. So Leo, does it sound like you can hear? Such a, sorry, thanks Carol. So Leos, their element is fire. I can see that. Their animal is lion. Their chakra is the crown. And their planet is in sun. So Leos, uh, similar to a lion, they're very demanding individuals. If they want something badly, they will quickly get what they want. Um, they, they can tend to be self-centered, but they are also really loyal to their loved ones or pack like a lion. And they're very passionate and humorous. Um, so what I mean by, well, what we mean by if they want something badly, they are typically quick to get what they want is they're very like driven. So um, if they feel the need like, oh, that should be mine, they'll quickly try to get it without like, any repercussions, if that makes sense. And um, yeah, they also tend to be, they do tend to be self-centered, but not in like a bad way, but like kind of, let me make sure I'm stable in myself first. Next is Virgo, which is August 23rd to September 22nd. Its element is Earth. Um, it's represented by the Maiden. Its chakra is the throat chakra, and its planet is Mercury. Mercury, as we said earlier, is the planet of communication, so that is why their chakra is throat. Um, it is also Beyonce, zodiac sign. I laughed because I forgot to take that part out. <laughs> Virgos tend to be creative individuals who are patient, kind, and overall always caring for their friends. However, they can be stubborn and intense. So Virgos are very um, analytical. 
mm-hmm. they are said to be perfectionist. They they say that Virgo's upbringing, they were brought up and kind of criticized a lot when um, in their childhood. And that kind of turned into them criticizing themselves. So they um, tried to be as perfect as possible. Um, they are emotional, but they're not going to show you their emotions. You're going to have to warm up to them. You're going to have to earn their trust first. Um, they are extremely fun when you get to know them. They will be some of the first people to do something that is just silly and fun. Um, they're also very great at being social at social events. They have the ability to relate to others because their mind is so analytical. They can see situations from different perspectives. They can learn about different cultures and enjoy um, expressing the knowledge that they learned onto others. Yeah, they are. Really yeah. Silly. No, you can go. I was going to say, yeah, they really are um, really silly and fun individuals. They tend to be like the life of the parties. But uh, I could definitely see why their chakra is a throw chakra because you do not want to cross a Virgo. Because if you do, they, I mean, maybe this is, we have a Virgo in a crowd, but I can see that they are very, if they have to say something, they'll say it. But that might be coming from personal experience. I have a Virgo moon in Venus, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. Virgos are so critical because their environment was so critical. So mm-hmm. if they're critical of themselves, best believe they're going to be very critical about their friends, their partners, their family. So they usually don't use it as a negative form, but they see through a lot of the things that you need to work on, just like they see through the stuff that they need to work on. So when you do make them mad, you may get the truth <laughs> about yourself, but it's all to help you out. Definitely. I don't think I have any verb in me, but um, yeah, I don't think so. So uh, next, Libras, uh, their element is air, animals, scalies, uh, their chakras, heart, and then their planets and Venus. Um, Libras are highly idealistic. If they have their mind set on something, they ha- then it has to be perfect. Um, Libras are constantly fighting for what they believe in and have difficulty changing their mind, and they tend to be advocates and intellectuals. And um, that's why I feel like the heart shock is really fitting for them because, again, if they feel, if they have their heart set on something or their mind um, led on something, then it's very hard to change it. Like, it's really hard to change the mind of a Libra. You're doing my sign. Did you want to do your sign? No, you just better read me good. (laughs) Okay, so the next sign is Scorpio from October 3rd to November 21st. Um, The element is water. The animal is the scorpion. The chakra is sacral. And the planet they rule is Pluto um, and a little bit of Mars. As if you guys remember from earlier, Mars actually is representative of Aries. So if you do have Aries placements and Scorpio placements, it is recommended to look at Mars in your chart. Um, characteristics they are extremely passionate and extremely intense they are extremely caring they have a large amount of emotional depth they can sometimes look at things as black and white because of their amount of loyalty and their amount of dedication to everything that they put themselves into um they are a researcher they will research for days to find the root of a situation um, if they care about something, they're going to get down to the bottom of it. There's nothing that is going to change their mind. They are the fixed sign. So the fixed signs, as we said earlier in the modes, a little bit stubborn, a little bit unyielding. They're not going to stop. Um, they are leaders. They are extremely intuitive. They have the ability to read you. They're the people that you would approach, and they would automatically know who you are. Mm-hmm. Um, they have incredible willpower because um, Scorpios are said to have um, situations that they go through that can be extremely emotionally challenging, maybe even physically challenging, and they get through them and they take the lessons that they've learned through that and apply that onto the rest of their lives. So they have the ability to get through literally everything. 
Okay, you read me good. <laughs> um, I was just going to add that uh, I believe their willpower is due to their passion. Like Kamara said, we're really passionate individuals. So like, if you have your heart set on something, you will not stop until you get it. And that kind of goes into what Kamara was saying with the black and white. There is no gray area. It's either I don't want to go through with this or I'm going to go through with this and keep on pushing. Um, and then I'm also surprised that uh, chakra doesn't fit into the third eye. Mm -hmm. uh, chakra, because like cancers, they're really intuitive and uh, they tend to read people really well. Well, they say that you guys are the um, sacral chakra because of the sacral chakra is representative of creativity and sexual expression. So in general, as I put known for your mysterious nature, when people first see you, they get kind of intrigued by you. They kind of feel like, oh, kind of mysterious, sexy, alluring type of thing. Ew! Sorry. <laughs> I know. But um, you guys are very empowered. So you guys represent the sacral chakra because the sacral chakra is once again expression. And deep down, you guys have a lot of um, empowerment within. Also, you guys are known for being mysterious because similar to Virgo, you guys kind of wait to make your first step. You kind of mm. watch everything first and then you make your first step. Okay. Oh, that's me. So uh, the next sign is Sagittarius. Their element is fire. Their animal is the centaur. Uh, their chakra is sacral as well. Their planets in Jupiter and they tend to be really optimistic, um, adventurous, as we said before. They really want love to travel, learn as much as possible, learn new cultures, um, risk takers, and they're all about fairness, but they can be blunt. Um, Sagittarius's, they tend to not like to be tied down and want to explore as much as possible. Um, they also attract, whoops, they also attract everyone they meet and they love to stay young at heart, I would say. And then um, according to Beyonce and her song, they have multiple personalities, but I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> Probably because they just love to be tied down. And it's not that they um, are bad in relationships. It's just that they like to be open-minded and um, learning things. So. Well, next we have the Capricorn. If you're born between December 22nd to January 19th, you are a Capricorn sun. Your element is earth. Your animal is the goat. Your root, I mean, your chakra is the root. Your planet is Saturn. Characteristics, you are very ambitious. You're driven. You're emotional, but you will not show it. You like to maintain a certain face because in general, you have an approach to life that's very business-like. Um, you're compassionate when others get to know you. You are a natural born leader and out of life you seek stability. Um, Capricorns are very ambitious. They're going to get their business done first. Mm -hmm. um, business comes first, fun comes second. They're very into routine. They're not gonna go into something without thinking it through first without planning it out. But when you get to know them, you get close with them, you realize how um, caring they are. They may show care in um, acts of service or in gift giving instead of showing care through literally saying, I care about you. Yeah. Uh, it definitely okay. is all work and no play for Capricorns, I feel like. Um, as you said, they really are very sweet individuals. Yeah. But they also tend to hide their feelings. And maybe this is kind of speaking from personal experience, knowing Capricorns, but they tend to hide their feelings until it boils over. Um, so we're almost done. Aquarius, their elements in air. Uh, their animal is the water, water barrier. They are also the chakra roots. Their planet is in Uranus and Saturn. And they're innovative, um, unconventional. They do not like being in the crowd. Um, they kind of want to be, they're really unique individuals. They're emotionally distant by viewing things objectively. They're free spirited and someone you can always come to for advice.
I just wanted to clarify, they're not, um, I don't mean emotionally distant as in they don't have any emotions. Um, Aquarius has a lot of emotions. However, they're known to kind of um, project their emotions because they don't see emotions as something that's logical all the time. Mm -hmm. However, that um, even if your son is Aquarius, you may have a lot of other placements in water signs and you may love and accept and embrace your emotions. So it does depend on your whole chart. But they have a heart. <laughs> <laughs> Next is Pisces. The element is water. Um, the animal they're represented by is fish. Their chakra is once again sacral, and their net, I mean, planet is Neptune. Um, they're known to have a high emotional depth. They are generous. They have the ability to change um, and adapt to situations. They're extremely empathetic. They're creative. They are natural born healers. Um, they tend to be idealistic, and they tend to kind of be in their own head at times, kind of daydreaming about whatever desires they have. Um, they can escape through not only daydreaming, but perhaps eating their favorite food, perhaps um, overindulging in things like um, maybe driving every night or things like that just to escape their emotions. So they have so many emotions, so much emotional debt. Their um, fish kind of ties into their personality in that Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. So we have one in order this entire PowerPoint. And since they're the last sign of the zodiac, they have the ability to take traits from each zodiac because they were last. They were born last. So they have watched the other 11 signs. <laughs> um, so they have the ability to kind of flip. You kind of won't be able to read them unless you're extremely close to them. Um, they can be a little bit moody. Um, so if you're interested in learning more, oh, someone said they're a Pisces moon. Ooh. So that's going to play out in your emotions. So the moon sign represents your emotions, your emotional intelligence. The moon sign also represents your mother. So your mother may have been very, um, she may have been the type to cry with you. She may have been the type to um, care about your emotional security growing up. Or you may personally um, be a little bit sensitive when it comes to your emotions. You may be a little bit more embracing. Um, well said. So uh, for the last slide, well, almost the last slide. If you're interested in learning more, here are some YouTube channels, websites, and Twitter. Um, and then also what Kamara and I were saying in the beginning, CoStar is a good app if you just want to quickly learn um, your placements, but I wouldn't use it for um, like actually knowing the descriptions of each astrological sign. And then what app did you say, Kamara? Oh. Um, time passages. Okay. So if you are interested in watching like YouTube videos, literally you can just go to YouTube and type in, um, I know someone said they have a Pisces moon, you can type in Pisces moon. Um, if you want to go deeper into your chart, this is a symbol of Virgo. This is my moon. It's in my eighth house. You can search literally in YouTube, moon and Virgo in the eighth house. And a bunch of stuff will pop up. Or you can, if you like reading, you can read a bunch of articles on it. Yeah. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the workshop. Oh, this was the last slide? Cool. Thank you for all for coming. Um, what are we doing Wednesday? Chakras and Tai Chi? Tai Chi, yeah. Yeah, we'll be checking what uh, chakras need a more work personally um, through meditation. And we'll be kind of distressing through Tai Chi, which is always really fun. So, thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>